I am Madish, I'm presenting Maddix, the lack of imagination that they were to choose the name, but uh, Maddix is a toolkit that allows people to install free open source application on a known server without the need to have, of having technical skills or make a big investment. The idea came from my experience with Xnet, which I am co-founder, and this uh, Xnet is an activist group which uh, operates in, in things related with digital democracy, uh, privacy protection, whistleblower protection, and so on. So working with other activist organizations, we were surprised to see how many people were using services provided by big corporations, and they were creating actions and sharing sensitive information, for example, with the Google groups or stuff like that. And these people normally, most, most of them were aware that this was not the best practice, but they had no alternative. They said, I, I, I have no sysadmin, I have no money to pay one, what can I do? And we had no answer for that, actually. So th this is what we did, build this answer. The approach to build this tool was very clear to us. We didn't want to be to create a service, to offer a service. We wanted to offer a solution that will empower users and transfer the responsibility of their data as well as the application to them. So we do not run a service with our sysadmin that manage their data, yeah, okay, encrypted, whatever you want, but it, it would be on our uh, our responsibility, and so we didn't want to reproduce that. So we decided that this tool must run on own service of people that can have at their home or which, with whatever uh, internet uh, hosting provider. Uh, so uh, this graph, I, why, why did I show you this? You say, it's this crazy. Because this is a list, an incomplete list of companies owned by Alphabet. And it's incomplete for two reasons. Because in the same Wikipedia they say that it's incomplete and because it didn't fit in my screenshot. I made some GIMP to make it fit, but I couldn't get it all. So uh, the thing is, uh, if somebody needs uh, email, in make the decision to switch or their their organization from Gmail, for example, to another email provider, uh, which option they have. They could, for example, use ProtonMail, we have just seen, but on my opinion, the, the model is not uh, that different. I mean, you still trust that people from ProtonMail uh, respect privacy and care about that. We say, okay, I mean, I'm not discussing that, but it's just a technical design, right? Or Tutanota, so what happened if Tutanota tomorrow belongs to, the, to that list. We, don't, we have the same problem. We have not solved the base problem. That's why we decided that the, the email server must run on people machine, not on our uh, common email server. And uh, email is important. This is the graph. The first one is the Gmail users, and the blue bar refers to younger people. So it also uh, it, it shows that there is a tendency of young people to use these tools, and it's normal because it works. It has a sex interface, and you have a lot of other services once you set up a Gmail account, and you can have it set up in a minute, of course. So the alternative, if you don't want to transfer this responsibility from Gmail to another external or more friendly, uh, uh, privacy friendly company, the only alternative you have is to run the email server yourself. And this is a guide that you can follow. And when you get at the end, this is to install PostFit Dover code with LDAP. And you, when you get at the end, this is the result. And from here, you can start creating your first email account. And this is not sexy at all. So uh, many people will end up here. And so, of course, this is fail, right? So this is the ideology, or I mean, the, the idea that was with us all the time when developing this tool. With, so it, there is not only the email uh, server, of course, there are other tools for, 
uh, there are a lot, but uh, next cloud, on cloud, uh, only office online, libre office online, uh, a lot. Uh, Rocket chat, VPN, so people can, from a graphical interface that we have developed uh, and which is installed on own server, uh, when you start using Mavix, uh, with this graphic, from this graphical interface, you just select the application you want, you push the install button that is over there, and the, the uh, installation process starts. Uh, from the same graphical interface, you can also manage other things. You can get a look at how, the, how your system is, you can create users, give them access, you can create VPN accounts, you can create virtual hosts for your domain, and all the typical things you need in a server. So, but how does it work? So, you can think about Mavix as a recipe of, uh, um, a repository, sorry, of recipes that people can download and apply on their own server. Uh, this, now I, I, I will show a, a slide that you would say, oh, no, yes. This is, these are the technology we use. But uh, some of you in the hall may know that Ansible and Puppet are not really privacy friendly tools, but we changed the way we implemented them. So for Open Nebula, we only use that in case we also provide hosting to set up a virtual machine. But if you want to use Amazon, we don't use Open Nebula. You, you, give a, you, you provide the server yourself. So the first, okay, it's a part. So Ansible, we just use it at the beginning to set up the first very basic installation. So we do not uh, offer using Maddox in server that are already previous configuration because it would be a mess for us to calculate all the possible panorama and we prefer to, to go on developing rather than uh, solve different uh, uh, scenarios. So once uh, Ansible basically what does is install the Puppet client. People could say, no, I want to do that my own. Okay, but I mean, we have all the, all automatized, why not? So, and we could one day make a, an image that people can install, or a, but, but we go slow because, because we are a small project. Anyway, so then Puppet, once you have the Puppet installed, you run a first Puppet agent. This is how it called, it's called. And the Puppet agent talk to this repository and ask uh, him, him, it, her, I don't know, to download uh, the, the basic, uh, and to configure the, the base of the system, which includes the graphical interface, the LDAP uh, directory, and MySQL, and all the base, yes, base packages. So, Puppet normally is not good for this purpose, to, to, to build uh, autonomous and, uh, and privacy-oriented uh, tool, because Puppet normally needs to know all the secrets about the machine that is talking with, with it. I mean, to install, for example, a MySQL server, Puppet needs to know which to provide, which password will be used as a root password for the MySQL server. And normally Puppet stores this information on the master server. And this was something that we wa didn't want. So what we do, we solve this problem in a very silly, simple way, but it works. It works like a sham. So we cheat the Puppet Master so that it is using fake templates with fake values that are common for all installation. And upon the installation is, over, is terminated, the machine locally generates its own secrets and overwrites these secrets with the one that was used by Puppet. And that way we not only, I mean, there are two two benefits of this way of working. One is that, under a security point of view, we don't store in the same place a lot of secrets of people, which we don't want. It would be quite, uh, quite a mess for us. And second, uh, users can apply own configurations and Puppet wouldn't then overwrite this personal configuration. In a normal environment, Puppet would do that, right? So. Um, then it's great, but then a lot of people 
who are an organization who are actually in high risk area started using Maddox because it was useful for them. They could have in infinite VPN account without asking anyone. It was very agile for them. And so suddenly we get concerned about the security because we took care about that, but you know. Uh, so we asked somebody external, externally to make a security audit, which we did with uh, open, uh, radically open security. And uh, the thing is that from this security audit, the result was that there were a lot of recommendations that we are now in the phase of implementing in order to ensure the security of all the system. And this represents for us a big challenge because uh, we had to translate all these concepts to the graphical interface. We don't want people to avoid using this security uh, enforcement because they are too complicated, so we are making an effort. We are not expert in UX, so we are making an effort. We will need help on that. And uh, also because, for example, the, the security audit says that we just should allow TLS version 1.2. And we know that there are people using Maddox that have old uh, browsers that do not support that. They may have problems, so it would we would transform Maddox in something new, impossible to use, not working, you know? So we decided to leave this decision to users. So now we are implementing all views, all interfaces related with these issues, uh, these security issues. And um, so uh, Maddox you can use once, install the application you want, and not use it anymore. You cannot talk with the, with the server, you can actually uninstall the puppet or whatever. Uh, but what we do, we also provide updates because one system, once it runs, you need to, to maintain it. And so we publish periodically new releases in which, typical, we, we have bug fixes, security enforcement, new application, updates for existing previous applications. So the important thing on that is that this graphical interface is not running any command. It's just an interface from where all the, from where user inserts uh, data which are written from this interface, which is a Django, uh, based in Django, and write in the end up. So then there is the cron who is reading this LDAP, and if it finds that something must be done, because there is a status who changes, so the puppet is triggered. Otherwise, no. Uh, for example, these are some custom models we have developed. We also use some models from the Puppet Forge, and these are uh, models that run locally on the machine, so not every time the, the client needs to talk with the master. There are, for example, uh, when creating a new, um, a, new, a new domain and you need to create the virtual host, this is something that the machine can carry out locally on their own using these puppet models. Yes? So what, what it happens is that if a new domain is added, the, uh, the domain's module turns into a locket status. So the cron read that and uh, perform all the necessary tasks in order to create the virtual host, the let's encrypt certificate, the web root folder, and all that. So we are always working on, on this tool. Ooh, we have a lot of time working on this tool. And we are now planning to add uh, new tools such as Moodle, uh, then also we want to add something for online forms, which are not pretty sure which is the best solution, if you can help, help us on that. But basically the, the decision uh, to, to add a new feature is from the feedback we receive from people that are using that. So, uh, but yes, we want to add a Kanban, that there is nothing right now for that. Uh, and there is 
You have to think that Maddox can, can run on a very small machine. We use very little Docker just for the application that had only Docker support um, with, a, with a Docker as the image support. And uh, all the other stuff are integrated. Uh, we just use uh, Debian because we, it's easier for us to, to just give support to one operating system. And, uh, and of course, people have root access to their machine. It's their own machine. Uh, they have root access. They, everything is written in the log. We didn't publish the, the server side because it's just a puppet with, with the models we use. And most of them, we publish the one we have developed, but the other one are from the puppet porch directly. So also, the, all the sources are downloaded directly from, if you, if you download, I don't know, the MySQL server, it's downloaded directly from, with Debian from the source. So yes, we would like to make a better documentation of all the infrastructure we will do, but you know, we are always, uh, behind the, the, the timetable, but this is our intention, and I think it's all. I hope you have understood what we do, and thank you very much. Thank you very much. There's a lot of time for questions. Does anyone have a question? I would like to ask if you are, are aware of, of um, you know, host and Cloudron. And Cloudron, yes. Yes, yes the difference and is that... Uh, you know host, Cloudron, and yes. I, 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 the other one... Yes, the other one is, I tell you, um, yes. I, the one that the guy went to work with, yes. uh, no. Cloudflare, no? How is that called? Sandstorm, Sandstorm. Sandstorm, yes. 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 I know what... I've got what are the differences? Uh, yes. Uh, before starting, we looked, it, because if this solution already exists, why repeat ourselves? So, the difference with Cloudron is that on Cloudron, if you install on your own another application and then you update the Cloudron, it will overwrite all your custom things. They say that on their website. So it was not useful for us because it was just for us, it, it, Maddox is the tool that avoid repeating boring tasks such as installing, you know, but uh, people need to have the freedom to then make the customization of their own system. So this was not useful for us. Uh, uh, Sandstorm, Sandstorm for something is more complicated for users. If you want to set up a website and make it accessible with the domain, some configuration, and you still need have to have some skills in order to install there, run it, and so on. And among these three, you know, host is the one we m love more. We think it's great. Yesterday we were talking with people from the project. And the thing is that in this case also, uh, people uh, need to somehow have a CISAD name capable to make some little maintenance on, on the one hand. On the other hand, we saw that the, their interface Yes, is running scripts directly. And we thought that under a security point of view, it was not a good decision. We wanted something that uh, avoided, that could mark this difference and this separation. And on the other hand, this system allow us to also provide service, service as a sysadmin, I, I, I refer, to bigger organizations and uh, provide them a very customized uh, uh, configuration for the server you, because, for example, we can we could create a, a template just for them if we want, you know. So and we do actually we do we, we give uh, maintenance and, and support to bigger organization and uh, they ask us, for example, a, a future that it so it only works for them, you know. So we don't we just can work that way also with bigger organization, and, but we have systematized all the sysadmin work, which is boring and repeating and so on. Any more questions? We still have time. Uh, so would it be possible to um, install it on a, like my own machine that I have running in my basement? Your own PC? Yeah. Uh, yes, you could. But think, uh, it's a server environment, 
And uh, the, with the local um, installation, the problem is the IP. If you are changing IP, think that you have, for example, uh, let's encrypt, uh, certificate generated, that then if you change IP, everything will break, you know? So, oh yes, you could, but take into account this thing about IPs, for example, to install the rocket chart, you need a, a, a known domain or subdomain, the process automatically creates the virtual host, so if your ISP change your IP, your Maddox uh, is fucked up, you won't work anymore. But yes, it can work. You can, for example, decide, then you make some configuration and decide to work, to use it just in a LAN, and so it could work. Any? How do you do major upgrade? Major upgrade, oof. We did from Jesse to, to Stretch, and in this we need to a little bit communicate with the user. It's not just a button, but the, the, what we did was a button in which users send us um, like a report, because so we see if they had made some, uh, installed other applications, you know, to see if the if their system has some application that we are not in, is not included in the upgrade, for example, then we have automatized part of this process. But we every machine that we had that we did the upgrade from Jesse to Stretch, we say to people, come to the RC, uh, write this command, do that. I mean, we, you know, we had to communicate because it's a major upgrade. We tell them, do a backup before everything. So uh, this is a little bit uh, more complicated. We could not get just one click, but because we prefer also that. We prefer to have a conversation with them, uh, be sure that they have a backup and stuff like that, because we don't provide backup to people then we are going to implement encrypted backups, so we will also maybe find a way to, to solve that, but at the moment we do not provide backup. And there, sorry, here in the, in the GitLab there are some pre-stretch, post-stretch manifests that you can get a look of what they do, that is the preparation to go to, from Jesse to Stretch, you can read them. And did you automate also the installation, configuration of uh, things like uh, fail to ban uh, or yes. clam up uh, yes. stuff like that? So it's we the security use, aspect. We have a spam assassin, for example, something that user can install. And so now we, for everybody, is level three, but we will in, um, add the option to increase or reduce this level. And for fail to ban, also the configuration. See, so now is the default. And it's for SSH, uh, Sarvel, Apache, .code, and so on. It's a, but I mean, now is already, it's included by default in on all servers, not a package that people can decide to have or not. This is mandatory <laughs> in this case. But yes, we would like to add the, the opportunity to, you know, to change the, for example, we will need to put the opportunity to unban IP from this control panel because a lot of people, for example, when configuring the Thunderbird, yes, they make errors there and so they get banned from their job codes, you know? So we would like to add a customization for that. How, um, hello, how do you decide which apps are uh, included in the library of apps. How does it work? We started because we needed this tool. So we started putting the, the tool, the apps we needed, and, so, and the community we were working with. And then some other that we didn't think of uh, were requested by people that were already using Maddox. And so when we saw that it was not just only one person, but more than one, so we decided, ah, okay, they are right. This, app is useful. So if somebody uh, requests that, ah, oh, it would be great to have this application and it's not really a crazy thing that it's, uh, huh? we, we add it. You said that you're going to add new apps in the future. Yes, in, in the future is six months because- Like Moodle, you said Moodle. We want to add Moodle 
and we want to add, uh, we were thinking about the line survey, you know, to, to create online form, but it's not really so much easier to use for, I mean, it, the interface, in my opinion, is not so clean, so we are digging and investigating why, uh, why not? <laughs> uh, which alternative could there be for that? If you know some, we would love to, to, to check more. Okay, thank you very much. We're running out of time. Thank you.